Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue looking at Microsoft Word today. And we're actually going to look at one of the features that I think is one of the coolest features. Microsoft Word actually contains the ability to automatically create a table of contents based off of section headings. Um, and to do this, all we have to really do is manipulate the said, um, section headings and let it know that we want these to be included within the table of contents. So I've actually gone and created a document that we will use to manipulate. Um, and they're like fake headings that we've set up. So you can see how changing the headings and what the different heading um, you know, styles mean when we create the table of contents. So let's jump in and look at the document. So as you see here, as I mentioned, I've already created the document. And being from Connecticut, I kind of created the document to look at things um, you know, about Connecticut. So let's first start and look at the, um, where the styles are. And they are actually on our Home tab. So we're already here with the Home tab selected. And the styles are like your, um, the right half of the screen. So let's quickly zoom in and look at the different styles that we have available to us. So as you see, we have one that's you know the normal style, no spacing. And the ones that we are really interested in are headings one, two, and three that we're going to use today. There's a lot of you know, other headings um, as well that you could see as I keep scrolling over. And even if I click down on this, you know, it gives us a bunch more. And I'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see that there are a lot of different headings that we can use. So to start with, we need to set the headings as appropriate. And so History of Connecticut, this is our main heading. So we're going to set this as heading one. And to do this, you know, we're just going to select everything, do that with the triple click as well. And then we can select, just hover over it. And it does shrink it. It does have a default size. And for you guys, I am just going to quickly increase the font size so that you can view it. And so now that's how we do our heading one. The next one we're going to do is our heading twos. And these are the you know, present Civil War, Revolutionary War, and Colonial times. So I'm just going to highlight them all with just you know, click and drag. And then I'm going to select heading two. And I will increase the font size so that it's visible at home. And then next, you know, we're going to get into the famous people from Connecticut. And you probably will recognize some of these people. And I'm just going to you know, continue with what we were doing with selecting and famous people. This is a main heading. So we're going to make this a heading one. And you will see how these headings matter when we get into you know, creating it. So we're just setting things up now so that we can you know, get to too big. And then I'm going to just select the actors, Meg Ryan, Meg Ryan, Seth MacFarlane, and Catherine Hepburn. And we're going to, for the first time, we're going to set these as a heading three. And you will see how you know, these headings really matter when we create the uh, table of contents. So I will make these a little bigger. And I'm just going to quickly do the rest of them so that I can then show you how to, how to uh, create the table of contents. All right, so now that we have our document kind of set up, we're actually going to go and create our table of contents. And so you will be able to see how the different headings, you know, heading style one, heading style two, and heading style three, you know, how they affect the table of contents. So let's jump back into our document and we'll quickly create that table of contents and then we'll play with it and see how, you know, we can update it so it reflects the current changes and everything. So let's get back into Microsoft Word. So right now we're selected on the Home tab. We actually need to be on the References tab. This is how we will be able to um, insert a table of contents. So I'm going to select the References tab. And if you notice, on the left-hand side, and I'll zoom in so you can see as well, that it has this table of contents. 
So we could select this, and I'm going to zoom out because it is a larger listing. And so you can see that it gives you a drop-down menu, and there's these different styles that we can select. So we're going to insert one of these, but you know, before you insert it, let's make sure that our cursor is at the beginning of our document. So you can scroll all the way up and get to the beginning of the document. And now we can go and insert our table of contents. So you know, in this menu, just look and find one you like. So I'm going to use the uh, automatic table too. Now I'm just going to select that. And notice it doesn't seem like it really did anything, but it actually created an entirely new page for us. And I'm going to scroll up and notice that everything is automatically generated and it has a table of contents. So, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to do this because it's it's already, you know, there. We don't have to go and manually do it. Just imagine if you had a really long document, a term paper, you have this ability to go and create this table of contents automatically. You know, right now ours is pretty boring. Everything's on the first page if we look at our table of contents. So let's jump back into Word. I'm going to move items around. I'm going to insert some blank pages and then, you know, I'll show you how to update the table of contents so that, you know, you can always make sure it reflects the most current changes to your document. So let's jump back in. So I'm going to just move things around, and you can insert blank pages as well. Um, you know, I like using keyboard shortcuts. So, you know, you can hit Control and Enter, and it will insert blank pages. So now, if I look up, you can see that the history of Connecticut it's saying it's on page two, and everything else is below. So I'm going to move famous people as well onto its own page. So I'm going to just click in front of famous people, and I'm going to hit Control and Enter, and it's going to put in a page break. So now I've kind of moved things around, and let's go and see how to go and update it. Because if we look back here, notice everything's how it was originally. So if we look over onto the left side, right where we had the table of contents, you know, if we zoom in again, Notice that there's this update table option. And so, it will, you know, as you see, it says it refreshes the table content, so all entries refer to the correct page number. That's exactly what we want to do. So let's click this button, and notice it's asking us, what do we wish to do? Do we want to update the page only, or do we wish to, you know, update the entire table? So what we're going to want to do is select the correct option. Right now, all we want to do is update the pages we didn't make any changes to the headings. If you made changes to the headings, you're going to want to make sure you update the entire table. As we didn't make changes to the headings, we're only going to update the page numbers. So let's jump back into Word, and we'll go and update this, and you'll see how the changes um, take effect. So I'm just going to click OK. And notice it automatically did it for us. We didn't have to do anything. It updated everything. And so there's some other interesting um, features that you, can, that you can use with this as well. Because if you have a really long document, sometimes you might want to jump to a certain section to look at it. You might have to make changes. This table of contents actually provides us with the ability to quickly navigate throughout our document. So let's kind of jump back into Word, and I'll show you how you can quickly navigate through your document using the table of contents. So in our document, you know, nothing's changed. It's still the same. If we hover over the number a little bit, you'll see that it says, let me get it coming back up after I zoom in, current document, control plus click to follow the link. So if we hold down the control key, notice that the pointer changes to the finger. And now if I click on it, it brings us, and I'm going to zoom out so you can see, it brings us to the proper page. So, you know, the table of contents um, provides us with a lot of, you know, cool features to be able to do, because now we don't have to go and worry about creating the table of contents from scratch. If we change something, we don't have to go and update it. You know, Microsoft Word does it all for us. And even within, you know, the document, it provides us with an easy way to navigate. Um, and as you saw within the table of contents, 
the different headings, um, different level headings actually matter. So I'll point these out because I know I kind of skipped over it um, you know, earlier. So we'll jump back in and I'll finish up with explaining how the different level headings um, affect the table of contents. So I'm going to jump back up to the beginning. And so you can see that you know, a level one heading is kind of all the way to the, uh, to the left of your document. And then a level two is indented a little more. And then a level three, you know, such as the actors' names, you know, Meg Ryan, as you see, is indented even more. So the leveling matters just in how they're going to appear in the table of contents. So keep that in mind when you're selecting the leveling uh, when you're creating your table of contents. So, you know, we've kind of uh, looked at creating the table of contents, looked at the headings and everything. So, you know, try it out at home, practice with it, update content, uh, and make sure you update your table of contents. So, you know, thanks, and I'll see you guys shortly.